Welcome to Parenting Decoded, a podcast for practical approaches to parenting. I'm Mary Eschen. Our kids are smart. They really know how to manipulate us into getting what they want. Crying, whining, having tantrums, giving us the silent treatment. It can be overwhelming. In my last podcast, we were learning how to use choices early to avoid power struggles from the get-go. In this podcast, we're going to follow along that same positive path by using another technique that is a companion to choices, setting boundaries and limits. Sometimes without realizing it, we put our kids in the driver's seat. We think they know what they should be doing, but by golly, they do the opposite. Take eating dinner, for example. We put them at a table and give them food. We expect them to sit and eat it. However, after two to three minutes, they hop on out of their seats to get a toy to play with. We, in an effort to make sure they don't go hungry or become malnourished, run after them with a fork or spoon to try to get them to eat another bite. Or we put them back in their seats with threats and yelling, but it happens all over again. So frustrating, right? Or how about your child playing on electronics? You tell them they have 30 minutes to play a game and they never get off. If they do, you'll find them sneaking some extra time in here or there. Why does this happen in our homes and how do we get it to stop? First, kids need rules. It's been pretty well documented that kids do better in life when there are safe and loving boundaries. But boundaries have problems. Sometimes they're undefined. Sometimes they're too flexible. Sometimes they're set with a little too much negativity. Sometimes they have no consequences whatsoever. And sometimes we parents go overboard and set too many boundaries. So what I want to do is talk to you about how to set good boundaries. Number one, define the boundaries. Be upfront. If something is important to you, then even be willing to write it down and explain it if you need to. Make a poster. Make a list of family rules. Backpacks belong in the mudroom. We brush teeth twice a day. Electronics are charged in the kitchen. Number two, make it positive. I love how love and logic calls boundaries, quote unquote, loving limits. You want to tell your kids that they, what they can do, not what they can't do. Removing the air of negativity from your home as much as possible is such a breath of fresh air and it helps to combat our natural negative tendencies. I serve snacks to children who have washed their hands. I let kids play computer games who've finished the dishes. Kids can play with daddy when he comes home from work who have picked up all their toys. You're welcome to ride your bike with a bike helmet. I read I read books to kids who are ready for bed by 8.15. I help kids with their math homework who are treating me with respect. I drive kids to soccer practice who have their gear bag packed. I let kids drive a car who are paying for half the insurance. Number three, have consequences. If you're using positive statements, then there is usually an implied consequence. Like kids who don't do the dishes, not getting to play computer games, or kids who aren't ready for bed by 8.15, won't get books read to them. Kids need to know what will happen if they choose to disobey you or ignore you. Number four, be consistent. This is a tough one for lots of parents. If you set a rule, it needs to be followed through on. Saying that you serve dinner from 6 to 6.30, then you only enforce it 70% of the time, because one kid has been getting up and down and getting in and out of their seat and hasn't finished their dinner yet, so you're worried they haven't had enough to eat, it all sends a message that the rule isn't the rule. The kids aren't even confused to tell you the truth. They know you're just kidding when you set a rule, that you have no backbone, and that your rules don't need to be obeyed. If dinner really ends at 6.30 p.m., you need to end dinner. If your kids aren't supposed to be riding bikes without helmets, then if they do, you need to lock up the bikes, which is a natural consequence to their choice to ride without a helmet. Number five, you need to be reasonable. I mentioned that it's great to make a list of family rules, 
but be careful not to create so many rules that the kids feel they don't have choices and will start to rebel. It's best if you can incorporate ways for our kids to have a feedback loop, especially when setting up new rules as your kids grow. I did a podcast on family meetings, and that is an amazing place to set and review family rules. It's podcast number 17 if you want to go and review it. Number six, be calm and loving. When letting our kids know about the limits we have, we need to state them calmly using love and empathy, and we need to respond to them in the same way if we get grief from our kids. I don't want to wash my hands, or that's a stupid idea, mom, might be responses you get to your positive calm requests. If that happens, which I'm sure it will occasionally, use empathy and love and the classic, I know in a boring but loving tone. Kids aren't going to like every limit we set. Your your remaining calm will bring peace to the whole process. You can always talk with your child later to ask for feedback if you get too much grief, but not in the moment when their emotions are activated. That's basically it. Use limits in a loving way, and you'll avoid lots of power struggles with your kids before they start. Choices will help give them some control over things that you don't care about, and adding loving boundaries and limits helps smooth out communication as to what is expected in our homes. Using words with positive and loving actions seals the deal to helping your family grow in a positive and healthy way. I hope this was helpful. I'd love to have more interaction with you, my listeners. I have a private Facebook group for Parenting Decoded, that you can ask to join, or you can always send email to mary at parentingdecoded.com. Lastly, if you would, it would be really helpful to me if you could pass along this podcast to a few of your friends. That's all for now. Take care and be safe. Have a blessed rest of your day.